Hey, today I want to introduce you to Mr. Spray. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Spray. Hey, we're going to kill the dandelions in our yard, and this year, hopefully, even the clover. Looking forward to that. We'll go through some details of, of Mr. Spray, some of his unique features, and, well, I think you'll like it. Let's get started. Now, there's a special page in the sprayer manual here that answers all of my questions. Actually, it makes it pretty easy. One of the reasons I like using a sprayer uh, for liquid application better than the little spinner spreader that we've got on uh, our gator or that I've often used for granules. I, I find those a lot more difficult to get calibrated. With this approach, it's right here in the book. It tells you the, the, the gallons per acre that you're going to get at certain speeds. It's, it's all spelled out for you. And there's a few variables. So the biggest variable right here is these tips. I, I asked my local chemical company about what rates to use with the chemicals as well as what water mixture, what, what water rate I wanted to apply. They wanted me to apply about 15 gallons of total mixture per acre. And so I can do that here uh, with these particular tips. It looks like at about four and a half miles an hour at maybe just over 20, maybe 25 PSI. So before I put any chemical in, I'm going to adjust that pressure. Good time to see these wings. I chose the 18-foot boom. They offer them from, I think, 12. To, I think they offer a 35-foot boom. It's got to, notice that they do spring backwards. If you hit something out here, it'll just spring back and come back. That's really nice. So I'm going to be running my tractor at full throttle. So I'll go ahead to full throttle and then I'll, I'll turn it on and see what the pressure is. Notice it's got a PTO pump, so the tractor throttle speed really does matter. Now I'm going to turn it on. It's a little bit of a challenge here. They've only got eight hash marks between zero and 50. so. I guess that middle one is 25. So I'll try to get a little bit below 25 there. So at that level of detail, I guess there's some guess on it. We've got this jam nut here that I can put right up against it. And that should keep it from, from changing. I've got the water turned on. It's coming out the spray tips at this point. When I turn it off, you'll notice that the pressure goes up. So we don't really care what the pressure is when the water's off. We care about when the water's on. Now, if you need to do a manual calibration for some reason, this is the time to do it, right? Before you put any chemicals in it. But even if you're mixing chemicals, you want to fill it about half full of water before you uh, put any of the chemicals themselves in. That way, you've, you've got time to do some testing. The standard configuration on this sprayer uses this valve right here as the mechanical off and on valve to turn off and on the boom. Uh, it's, it's nifty in that it extends. So it's, it's on this angling pipe here, and you can loosen these two bolts, and it will slide upward at an angle. So it would come right up here where I'd have a lot better view of it from the tractor. In fact, I might even be able to get it all the way on the other side of the ROPS, where I would have pretty good reach. This was one of my complaints about the mechanical control in the past was it's always back here behind me and I can't find it. Well, this particular one might not be so bad because you can get it right up there close. And so I think if I could just reach around right here beside me, that, that might work okay. I chose the electrical option, which is an upgrade, so that I'd be able to switch it from anywhere. Um, it's got a, a plenty of cord. It's just a simple on and off switch. On the back side, it is a magnet. So you can stick it anywhere. I really don't know if it'll stick right there. Um, but the point is, is I can stick it anywhere and, and that will be handy. For temporarily here, since I'm not going to be spraying very often, I, I just powered it directly to the battery. I just dangled a, a cord up there directly to the battery. I always like these kind of upgrades. They, they just make, uh, make my life easier. I want to show you these spray tips. This is the difference between a professional sprayer and one you might get at a big box store. These tips are just as good as the ones used in big agriculture. The tips are actually removable. I have the purple ones 
in here. I didn't know that that was relevant. I didn't know that they were color coded, but hey, I'm learning. On this page that I'm showing to you right now, you can see on the left side, there's different color codes showing you which tip. And then that shows you on, as you move to the right, what your gallons per acre is going to be if you use that particular tip. This one is 110 degree width, so it sprays 110 degrees wide. Um, that's what this sprayer recommends. And it's a 25. This is not the standard one that comes with the sprayer. So you need to look at this page before you buy your sprayer and figure out which tip you actually want. You may want the standard one that comes, but, but he will replace them for you and give you whichever tip you want when you order the sprayer. But the tip fits right in there. And then there's a rubber gasket that goes there. And then right up in here is the strainer. So that strainer sets on top of this gasket here and fits right in there. This strainer is your last line of defense from plugging these tips and they are tiny holes so it's entirely possible that you can get a tip plugged. This is something that they struggle with in uh, big agriculture all the time. They have to watch those tips and um, if they get plugged they just dribble out instead of spraying wide. It's not like they totally freeze up and don't spray anything. Well sometimes they do but they get plugged. So, what makes this so special is you don't have to do any manual calibration. You know, catch it in a bucket and calculate all this and that. No, you know the distance between tips. By the way, it's 20 inches on this sprayer. That means you can keep the boom nice and low. With a 20 inch width, then this page will tell you at all the different speeds, etc., cetera, what, what uh, your gallons per acre is gonna be. Makes life a lot easier and makes it a lot more consistent in what you're going to apply. I've got sprayers on the property here that don't have these nice tips, but I don't think I'll ever buy another one that doesn't have professional T-Jet nozzles and tips. This boom's easy to remove. It, it's not actually attached at all. This uh, bolt goes up through here to hold it, and then there's two pieces of angle iron right down here. So it goes down into the angle iron, and then this is tightened and it squeezes itself into place. So you can choose any boom. You can even take the boom off and use this boomless. Uh, there's no problem with any of that. <laughs> I kind of like that approach. The one thing that I see odd about this sprayer is this foot right here. There's two feet on the front, um, which I'm happy to have, but this foot on the back uh, is right below the spray nozzle. So I've actually taken the nozzle a bit and, and gave it a little bend to tip it backwards a little bit. I'm just a little surprised they would put it right under the nozzle like that. This is Threesome, or Trimac, I think is another brand name. There's several different brand names for it. Now, for me, it's gonna work out fairly well. I wanna go 15 gallons per acre. So this 80 gallon sprayer should be able to, to do fine for my five acres, right? 75 gallons should be perfect. And at the same time, I need to do two quarts per acre of this. Well, that turns out to be two and a half gallons, which is the size of the jug. How could we do any better than that? Now I'll rinse that in a minute. This is Triclopper. Triclopper, Triclopar, Tricla, Triclopper 4. It said when used in a tank mixture with uh, the 2,4-D, the threesome, that about 11 ounces per acre is what I need. So for me, that's about 55 ounces. Hey, I'm not a professional at this. I just enjoy doing my own lawn fertilizing and weeding. I just, I don't know, it's just fun. In any case, don't use my recommendations. Talk to your local chemical guy and he'll be able to help you out and give you the straight and narrow. I'm going to get this started agitating now. Let's talk just a moment about the agitation. That's when the pump is actually churning the water in the tank. It sucks water in the bottom and then it's got an output right up here where it, where it shoots it back in. And this is how you mix the chemicals. The most entry level sprayers don't even have that, right? The only time that the pump pumps any water is when it's pumping it to the nozzles themselves. So that's one thing you want to look for when you're looking for a decent sprayer. You want to be able to 
uh, stir that essentially in the tank. You want to run your tractor at a fairly high throttle for the agitation process because you want the pump to actually be pumping a significant amount. It doesn't necessarily have to be full throttle, but uh, yeah, you do, want it, you do want it to be pumping. One of the key features of Mr. Spray here is the shape of the tank. I have a lot of trouble with the other sprayers on my property here of, of the bottom of the tank. I have trouble getting all the, the chemical and water mixture out of it. And then I rinse and I rinse and I rinse and I feel like I just never quite get it all out of it. I'm, I'm hoping that the, that the shape of this allows this thing to empty all the way and therefore it's gonna make it much easier to rinse. You just saw there when I rinse the containers there, once they're all the way empty, it doesn't take that much to get them rinsed. It's just when, you know, say a gallon or two of water stays in the bottom across a, a horizontal bottom tank, that's, that's just not easy to deal with. You can find out more about this at mrspray.com. Hopefully you can purchase online right there. Have it delivered directly to your house. It came packed on a nice pallet, uh, well packaged. It wasn't going to be damaged in any in any way. Really, really nice so far. Use coupon code TTWT and you'll get at least a 5% discount. I'm not sure. It may be more. And if they don't have online ordering set up yet at Mr. Spray, well, just give them a call. They'd love to help you. I've been around a lot of these sprayers now, so I, I, I'm beginning to be able to see some of the differences, what makes a, a sprayer a higher end sprayer versus an, an entry level sprayer. You know, there are some features that this one doesn't have as standard, but I see them all as options. For instance, you don't see the foamer on this one. Well, I elected not to go with the foamer, you know, the foam markers this time. I have something bigger up my sleeve. I don't know if I'll get it pulled off or not, but I have higher ropes than a foam marker this time. We'll see how that goes. The foam is about to get me here. Now the water level's right here. Now here's one more feature that's really nice when you've got a little wider boom like this 18-footer. Well, I consider that a little wider. Given that my brother Tom's sprayer boom is 90 feet wide, I, I don't know if I should be considering. Anyway. Three separate sections, so we can turn off individual sections. If you wanted to run only the middle, you could do that. If you wanted to run only one wing, you could do that. They're not really accessible from the tractor seat, so you would just have to, to get off the tractor, turn, turn one on to maybe do, uh, maybe alongside our driveway or something, and, and then uh, turn them all back on. And that's something that I would like to maybe take to the next level. You'll figure that out. Hey, this is a handheld wand to get to those places you can't reach with the boom. I think I need to start spraying. It's not trivial to drive at that width. Because it swings. So with 80 gallons, my front end's pretty light, but not, not horrible. I've already broke something. I uh, was right down at the end of the road where you get all, you know, twisted and angled and I backed up. You know, I just showed you about how these would, would spin away when you're going forward and also the nozzles are on the back side to protect just that. Well, I backed up and ran out in the dirt. And just as I ran out in the dirt, it broke the whole nozzle off. So yeah, I've got a broken nozzle here. So all this piece you know, this piece probably still okay, but the nozzle itself is broken. And there's no way, it's after five o'clock, we're leaving tomorrow, so. Tractor supply. 
tractor so I might want to have, have one or I might be able to plug this off if I, if I had a pipe plug or some way I could plug this one nozzle off and go without it well we're running again no tractor supply didn't have it uh, but we found another sprayer that I have that we can borrow a nozzle from so we're running until I break another one I'm not used to such a wide boom this has taken me a little practice but hey, the wind has died down a little bit, so I think it's going to be a, a better time to spray anyway. It is one thing you have to watch. Make sure you're not spraying when it's really windy. I'm trying to get used to the appropriate width. It's a long way over there. Now, I think we may have mentioned it in an earlier episode. Right now, we can't fly the drone. That's really bad for a video like this. It's hard to see very far with a stationary camera, so, yep. Maybe the drone will be back up soon. We gotta study for our license. bit of a trick to learn how to go around those trees. With such a wide boom and it's behind me that the boom swings away so I have to actually drive pretty close to the tree. No, it won't hurt the garden here. In fact, it's good to get some of that uh, winter annual and some of the, the stuff killed off of there before we plant. It would hurt to do it after we plant, or after the corn's growing. I think I would advise you to get the foam marker option. Yeah, it's $750 add-on, I realize. But it would really help to, to know where you are. I, I love mine, I've used it on another sprayer. I should have just transported it over here, but it, it wasn't gonna be a trivial project. Still, with this 18-foot boom, this is not gonna take long. Lots of clover right in here, so yeah, this may turn brown in a week or so. We've just not been able to kill the clover, and, and after talking to my uh, advisor, my chemical advisor, I, I think we know why now, so hopefully we'll get it this time. My temperature gauge is reading about, I would say, 145. It's a very pleasant evening, I'm guessing 65 degrees maybe at this point. Those hills are pulling the uh, tractor a lot with this full load of water. Uh, and I need every bit of the front weight we've got. It's, uh, the front end is pretty light going uphill. I may be driving too fast. I'm in high range. I don't have a speedometer. I know there's probably some app I can get. If you know a perfect app that'll read those low speeds, let me know in the comments section but I felt like low range, I wasn't necessarily getting up to that four miles per hour, but it seems like I've covered a lot of the, the lawn here and I'm down just below 60 gallons left, so maybe going too fast. The temperature is up to 150, maybe 155 now. It doesn't like this hill. Of course, we are running the PTO, but it's not heavy PTO. Use. In other words, it's, it's, the PTO is not challenging the tractor. I can't fit in there without killing those uh, plants in there, so I'm not going to do that. I'll have to do that with one boom turned off here in a little while, if I can remember. I like the electric switch much better than reaching around behind me. And like I said, this one had something to raise it all the way up here, but still, I don't think there's any way it could have been as good as this electric switch. Gonna have to treat the uh, algae again in the pond. It's already coming out this spring. It's clear I'm gonna have some challenges back here. I've got some areas where a full 18 foot won't work. Let's give a one of those 
temperature is 185. Wow. High range, that really works the tractor hard. I think I'm gonna turn this one off right here. And indeed, that is this side. So then I'm gonna fold this back. I can work with the right side and the center only. I'll turn it on for test. Yep, that's what we got. Nothing coming out of the one that's folded up. I think this may be a little handier. came in from the other way, I could do it. Let me see if I can do that. Look at this, I bent this a little bit when I was on my, that first time when I backed up. Uh, I can't keep anything without breaking it. Frustrating. Now we're just gonna be center only. Yep. It's getting kind of dark for you guys to see at this point, so we may uh, stop this here a little bit. But I do want to talk about the volume. Uh, we have about 35 gallons left. I don't think I'm spreading quite as much as I want. I suspect I'm driving a little faster than what I anticipated. It's really hard to tell. Uh, but if getting a little less on than I want is not really a concern to me, right? It's the opposite of getting so much on that I might kill the grass or something. So I, I don't want don't to have that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and yeah, certainly not the sprayer's fault. Just frustrating to me. The boom is so far out there and I'm just not used to it. And just a little bit of change like this and, and I backed up and ran it in the ground. But that happens and I always show it. I don't care if it makes me look stupid. Maybe you guys won't look stupid because you've seen me and are learning from me. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one.